Hi everyone, thanks for being here. Welcome, welcome back. I'm Morgan and I'm passionate about personal development, self-leadership and also shamanic healing. And today I have my friend as a guest and for my OG out there who used to follow our spiritual cafe every week, you will know who I'm talking about. And for those who don't, I'm going to let her introduce herself. Hi, Saraya. Hi. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me, Morgan. Thanks um, for being here. <laughs> to everybody out there, my name is Soraya Rosa, and I am a energy reader or or a reader. Um, and I also teach a bunch of things around that space and around um, how to embody the change in the identity of who you really want to become in your life. So we try to merge the two worlds of practically living our reality with spirituality. And right. I'm so excited to come over here and talk about with, about this with all of you guys. Yes, because uh, both you and I are very big on authenticity and leaving the version of yourself that you are and obviously who we are at core has been kind of buried if I may say so over the years because of false beliefs limiting beliefs trauma and all that so my point is even if you are yourself right now you can be still yourself in three months but like it doesn't mean you are not authentic right now, but in three months, you can still embody yourself, but to the next level, because you will have shed more layers of false beliefs, more layers of trauma, pain, releasing, suffering, and all that. So it's an ongoing process, right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. We tend to pick up on such little things that we don't even think about them as beliefs or limiting beliefs, but they are just there running on the background as our baseline programming. And we act upon them without realizing and create a foundation. And we build upon that foundation, not really realizing that we're doing it out of a limiting belief. And so all the little things we heard in our lives, all the little things we heard from others from our family from our friends from trainings from everybody we just collect that data and we automatically assume that that's the truth and that's how it's supposed to be um and that's why it's so important I, I believe you agree with me on this that's why it's so important to constantly check in with yourself every day if not every minute while you're having a conversation even with somebody to continuously check in on, is this making sense to me? Does this sound true to me? Is there a way that this is not true? So that we can be more aware of what are the ideas and beliefs and opinions that we're picking up on. And that's why, like you said, Morgan, we keep digging through it and we keep finding another one and another one <laughs> that we keep releasing and therefore becoming more and more authentic on our next levels yes that's so important there are so many things you said that really ring true and i was like yeah that's so true and uh even as entrepreneurs like the the false and limiting beliefs that we can get and everything we see on social media and <sighs> especially in the coaching industry. And you were saying at the beginning when you introduced yourself and you and I are, are similar in our activities because we are merging the coaching, the, you know, the, <laughs> I wanted to say the normal and the paranormal, like the, <laughs> the coaching and the energy aspect because we are, we are whole, we are whole human beings. So we cannot separate the mind from the energy from the physical from the emotions so we are really gathering all of that in our practice and social media is very <laughs> is a very good place to kind of lose track of that and create false beliefs and also that's why and that's when it's important to really keep checking with ourselves especially on social media, when you scroll, is this true? Does that resonate with me? Um, am, I, am I building a limiting belief? Because sometimes 
you are lost, right? And you search for information and you tend to absorb other people. And this is not done just once. It's an ongoing process. And if you don't notice, if you're not careful, um, you, not careful, cautious, because careful seems like danger. But <laughs> uh, it's, it can, you, you can absorb like the, the beliefs from others. Absolutely. Um, I do think it's important that maybe we give some examples because I feel that whenever we talk about limiting beliefs, everybody assumes we're talking about a friend or a message that says, um, you shouldn't do this. Ooh. And it's often quite the opposite when we pick up on beliefs because we're all like you said, we are energy and we are physicality, right? So we are a soul living a physical experience and we cannot separate that. And this is the age where so much more information is available to us, even on social media. Um, but when somebody says something on the positive side to you, that can be a limiting belief. Mm. When somebody's teaching you something, that can be a limiting belief. Because... We're all looking for solutions and how do we get to that next level? How do we make it happen? How do we manifest? How do we become better? How do we invest in ourselves? But everybody who's out there teaching something, they're doing it through their own lenses of who they are. And that doesn't mean that's who you are too. Right. So when somebody tells you this is the way that it's done, you really need to check in with yourself not to automatically assume that that is true because our subconscious i don't know if you've noticed this morgan but the moment you believe something in a very general aspect of oh social media is the place to go to for example to get clients mm -hmm. you just assume that social media is the place to go to for everything because your subconscious does not separate getting clients from uh, picking up information from producing content from showing up like for your subconscious everything's the same so when you say oh social media is the thing your whole focus becomes the social media and that might really work for some people because that really is in alignment with who they are mm -hmm. but does it work for everybody not hell well, no <laughs> <laughs> definitely not for me <laughs> So we got to be really conscious of this. We're looking for information to help us, but we're going to bump into so many things that seem positive and that seem inspiring and seem like, oh, this could be the way out. This is a thing I haven't seen before, but that can also be a limiting belief. And these are the limiting beliefs I feel most of us are not aware of, and we let them run as programming, as a baseline, and that creates so much stress in our lives. Yes. Yes, I totally agree with that, because at some point you... you, you that's a trap, because at some point you start to compare yourself to others. Like, oh, this strategy... Not in terms of, oh, my content is better or not at all, but more in terms of this works for them so I can make it work too. And then you realize that it's not working for you. This strategy is not aligned and you think that there is something wrong with you because it works for them and you see them succeed or whatever. Then you're like, yeah, but that doesn't feel right. And I don't believe in cookie cutters. I don't believe in one size fits all. And and we need to have the balls, if you pardon my French, <laughs> to actually step out of that and be totally okay with not fitting in the mold. Yeah, okay, social media works for some people. Great, like, sincerely, I'm happy for you. <laughs> like, if you're succeeding that way, if you're feeling fulfillment, because it's not only about success, it's about fulfillment, because otherwise it's like, half success in my opinion yeah. but anyway uh, you need to feel good about something because otherwise if you have your business if if we want to talk about entrepreneurship because we are both self-employed if you open your own business it's because you want to make your dream come true you want to have a certain freedom so if you end up being trapped doing things you don't want then you are still trapped in a system 
which you kind of, I don't want to say rebelled against, but felt out of alignment is, with in the first place because you you opened your business. <laughs> so there's so much I want to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. The first thing is, I believe you agree with me on this, but I want everybody out there to know that we've been taught so many lies around what's the right path. Mm -hmm. The right path for each and every single one of us is the easy path. And we've been taught that going on the easy path, it's a bad thing. You're taking shortcuts. That's not good. You're not learning anything. But here's some perspective. You were born with gifts. And those gifts allow you to perform something really, really easily. Because that's just who you are. That's your uniqueness. Right. And when we try to, oh, no, this is too easy. I mean, it can't be this because it's so easy for me to do it. It can't be this. So I got to find the way. And there's no right way. So we keep searching for all the possible ways that we get confused. And then we try to build upon that. And that's not in alignment with who we are because that's not what you're built for. That's not your gift. Mm. So we kind of tend to reject our gifts yeah, and yes. go with the path of, difficulty i need to master this mm. loves for everybody listening out there you have already mastered your gifts mm. you were born with them just need to remember yeah so it's about seeing them and accepting it's easy for me to do this so this is what i'm built for this is something i love it's it, it brings me that fulfillment that you were mentioning earlier so I heard this, I believe, from um, Dean Graziosi when he said, uh, we have been all been told so many lies. You are not here to become better at something that you're not good at. Hmm. You're here to become awesome at the thing that you are already good at. Wow. Because when we're good at something, that's our gift. So if we dedicate ourselves to it because we love it, because it fulfills us, and because it's creating something we really want for our lives right then we just master it faster than anybody else because we're built for it and in embracing that uniqueness we stand out not only to the market right because we're talking about entrepreneurship here but it's not just about the market it's about you stand out as a human being you become magnetic you feel good because you give yourself permission to just be who you want to be and do the thing you want to do. And that's when you create the better results for yourself and for everybody else's life. Which brings us to something even more important, Morgan. And, and we've talked about this before on how about we quit speaking so much about the results as the yes. old energy or framework we used to use for, for business and out there in the world where we need to have a tangible, measurable outcome. Yes, as yes. in something material that has happened in terms of manifestation. And why don't we just start actually leaning into the new energy, which says the outcome comes as a consequence of your inner well-being. Right. Definitely. The embodiment and just uh, that's the embodiment like is, is your, uh, your brand and self-leadership is what I'm developing as my brand too. So it, it all comes back to, to you as within, so without. Uh, and we, we see people, and don't get me wrong, it's, it's great. Like generally, I'm happy for people, don't get me wrong. But when you see coaches celebrating their client based on the income that they made, of course, it's great once again but what was the inner work that it took for them to reach that 40k per week or whatever like i don't know i'm just taking a random example and why not celebrate my client got rid of a limiting belief and as a consequence she was able to reach her dream or do this or do that but more focus on the shift the internal shift 
because we create our reality from within the way we create uh, our life. And you said something earlier about uh, choosing like basically the hard way instead of the easy way. That's also because we hear as children, I'm sure I'm not the only one <laughs> oh, in yeah. this case, you hear money doesn't grow on trees. Uh, do, do you think life is easy? You, you need to work, like get up early and go to work and then the taxes takes you all your money. <laughs> this kind of things that you hear, right, as a child and you're just a little child and you just hear adult conversations about this. So once again, it's not the adult teaching you actively this fact although sometimes they do like oh you need to study well at school otherwise your life is going to be a failure basically as if school was the only um <laughs> way to have a good life basically which i don't believe in that but anyway um that's a whole story but it's more subconscious because you hear people in the background you pick up on the energy of scarcity of fear And this is this comes from a place of soul wounds, of separation, of uh, rejection, abandonment, also self abandonment, and you're a sponge as a child because your personality is being built. So you are absorbing these energies. So when something comes easy to you, you're like, that's not normal. Some people are going to school for that. Or some people are taking training for that, and I could do that naturally. No, I, I'm. I must be a fraud, and that's when our good old friend, the impostor syndrome, <laughs> comes up, because yeah. you're like that. No, I'm. I must be missing something. Maybe I'm calling this like that, but it's not what other people are doing who are calling this service, this discipline, whatever, um, with the same name. No, it cannot be that simple. Can even make issues around worthiness and being open to receiving yes because you don't feel like you put in enough effort to get mm -hmm. something back yes so you might block the flow um or financial flow or any prosperity flow coming your way through your own natural gifts um you touched down there on on some important stuff um and i'm having a blank moment <laughs> sorry <laughs> i call them brain farts welcome to my club i have them a lot <laughs> oh my god yeah so as children we're all absorbing things from the world to try and learn how to survive in the world so we will take up all of this energy all of this knowledge everything we see oh that person's older than me They survived. So if I just take on their belief system and mm -hmm. their rules, I'm going to survive too. Right. Uh, and that's why I believe most people say that that's when you absorb the biggest quantity of limiting beliefs. It's when you're a child and you're, you're growing up. But I've noticed recently that as adults, we do that through a different process. We're not trying to survive, but we're trying to thrive and expand. And in that search, we also tend to collect information and take it as a baseline and as true. Um, and you also said something there that I feel it, it's really, really something we should explore, which is, as I mentioned earlier, our subconscious cannot divide things. If you say you have communication issues within romantic relationships, the last part, it didn't hear it. Your subconscious didn't hear it. It's like, Oh, communication issues, right. Let's spread it out. Now you have communication issues in your business, with your family, with your partner, with your children, with everybody. Because mm -hmm. you cannot separate energy. Your subconscious assumes it's everything. So, so a little, little shift that you have when working with somebody that changes one perspective, that changes one limiting belief, it's going to have a massive impact on how you see life as a whole on the way that you show up for every aspect of your life every area is going to be transformed from that point on and let me ask you this in a world where we're so um, worried about the tangible measurable outcome how do you measure that mm. it's not possible no It's not possible. You can't measure, oh my God, my mind was blown away with this conversation. I will never see life the same way again. 
Mm. You, you just can't measure that. So why are we so worried about figuring out the, the physical stuff? Yes, it, it's part of who we are, but we're li living in an expansion age mm -hmm. where we, we are past the trying to survive the lions and the wild animals. Mm -hmm. And so our focus should and is starting to change. I don't know if you've noticed this, but it is starting to change, although it's still like trying to break free from the old framework um, into let's focus on how we feel. Because I don't care if you make a million a month and you feel empty inside. No. That's not success to me. No, me neither. No. So we need to change the way in which we measure things, I feel. And this is probably the biggest revolution that's going to start <laughs> around uh, entrepreneurship. But we need to focus on how do I feel? How fulfilled do I feel? How happy do I feel? Because that also impacts the whole way in which you show up, the way in which you operate, make decisions, take actions. All of it will change. And as a consequence of that, it will lead you to manifesting certain outcomes. It, at the end of the day, our energy always leads to manifesting something. And what we do is the reverse process. We want to we want to control the actual end game, the actual outcome, when in fact we have no control over that. And the only control we have is over who we are and how we feel in our energy. Yeah. So if you shift your energy, if you shift your beliefs, how you feel inside right here, right now, your whole future changes. The whole outcome of what you're doing changes. Mm -hmm. So yeah. even if you're working with a coach or somebody who says, by the end of working with me, you're going to be making one million a month. Mm -hmm. That are can still be a limiting belief. Yeah. Are you going to be like, are you able to hold space within yourself for that one million or whatever amount? Because if you're not ready energetically to embody this version of yourself, you're going to create trauma for yourself because you're going to lose it all or you're not going to be prepared. And I'm not saying it's not possible to make a million quickly. Like, Don't get me wrong. I'm just talking about sustainability and once again, creating uh, an easy life for yourself without stress because once again you opened your business to get out of the stress of the corporate world yeah. so you you really need to grow with your business and to scale like I kind of cringe a little bit when I use that word because it's like oh scale your business uh, but you, you really want to do it in a sustainable way because it's not about reaching success it's about maintaining it but in a way that you can hold space for yourself and you're not creating stress, anxiety. Oh my God, how am I going to maintain that level? Uh, if the fears, like if the core beliefs and the core fears are not healed, it's going to create more trouble, more uh, trauma for yourself. And there is one thing that I wanted to say, but it's my turn to have a blank moment right now. Um, th that was something about um, the the money that you said. You know, when you when you said about uh, creating the business, shifting the yeah about manifesting. That's what I wanted. Um, manifesting has been more like uh, it has become a trend, right? <laughs> a trend. I recently realized that I prefer using the word creating instead of manifesting because manifesting seems like, oh, this is outside of myself and boom, it, it just appeared. But you work for it. You work on yourself. You work on raising your vibration to be a vibrational match for that which you desire. So it's about creating the life you desire by creating the, the human being you want to be. And like I always say, you don't want to be a better person because who is person? And I, I think I said this in another podcast, person, person in French means nobody. You don't want to be just a better person, human being walking around out there. You just want to be the next version of yourself. Yeah. But who are you? You need to find who you are and grow from within, not because 
oh, I'm not good enough. I suck. I need to change. No, it's just, I know I have gifts and I want to let go of these limiting beliefs because I deserve it. I love myself enough to do the work on myself. Yeah. And self-improvement. And also we need to trust the universal laws. Like you are saying, when we change, the world around us changes, right? And we don't trust the universal laws because they are intangible. But when we give, like giving is receiving, but the universe doesn't care. Like if you give money to Peter and Peter doesn't give it, you might not receive it from Peter. You might receive it from That's John. You know, it's yeah. like the, the universe is like, it's about energy. So you receive what you put out, but it doesn't matter who you put it out to. Just give to the collective and you will get back. If you give from the heart, if you really uh, are sincere, you know, I'm not talking about manipulation or, you know, people who are doing horrible things or casting spells on others. And then they go and donate their blood or donate, donate money to charity because they hope they actually, they think that they're going to escape karma because they are good people. That's not how it works. Like the universe is not stupid. Like it's, big intelligence you know like the divine intelligence you cannot really fool the divine <laughs> so yeah. well actually I, there's just for those who are listening to us for your awareness morgan touched based with how limiting beliefs around making one million can impact you but there's a flip side to that or a different side to that um let's imagine you're working with somebody and by the way no matter who you work with there's always a manifestation or a creation process at the end. You are always creating something. Mm. However, by being aware of what you're projecting energetically, you have a bit of a better sense of what you could be projecting and creating. Mm. But let's imagine you decide to work with somebody. Let's take the same example who promises you, you work with me, you're going to be making a million a month. That can be a limiting belief through a different angle, which is, you can take all the knowledge this person is showing you and apply it to the T and do get 1 million. It can happen. Maybe it's not sustainable vibrationally, but it can happen. Mm. But what if you take all of that and at the same time, you expand the areas in which you're applying it and you decide that you're just going to embrace your gifts your natural talents that are easy to you because you love yourself enough for it and give yourself permission, like you said. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're not going to make a million. Maybe you're going to make two million. Right. So you can't tell yourself, I'm going to work with this person because I'm going to get this particular outcome because that is limiting yourself too. That's so true. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a very good point you are bringing there. Definitely. So even in the good stuff, that we are looking to get, that we're looking to create, that seems to be one level up, the next level of ourselves, the next version of ourselves, that can still be a limiting belief. That can still be holding you back. Because you're putting a number on it. You're putting it a day, you're putting a number, you're putting a definition, you're putting a measurable outcome in there. And I promise you all, and by the way, let me, let me, Take advantage of being here and, and having people listen to us to put it out there. I've just decided that I'm going to run with this. To me, it is extremely important. And I believe up to this point um, in our conversation, everybody can understand this, that what you feel, how you feel inside is a hundred times more important than the actual outcome you're being promised by everybody else out there in the world. Yes. Because there's no number on if you feel happy 100% of the time, your vibration like <laughs> skyrockets. It doesn't mean you're not going to feel bad, but it means you know how to work with the energy laws because you understand them. Mm -hmm. And so you're able to extend the vibration and you feel better the majority of the time. And there's no measure to how much fulfillment progress abundance that can bring you that's so true and i do not from now on want to focus 
on the actual outcome. And for all of those who are listening to us who are entrepreneurs, you all have heard in order to create a good offer, you need to have a tangible outcome. Mm -hmm. I will not do that. I am calling that out as a limiting belief in our new world's energy. It's not in alignment. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to do that. So for those of you who will later on check out what I'm doing, you will not going to see manifesting a house, a partner, um, a job. You will not see that. Mm -hmm. You will see happiness, fulfillment, and all the goodies that we can feel inside. And yes, of course, you're going to manifest. You're going to create from there. But what you create depends on your energy. And it depends on your unique energy. Mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah. we got to all quit trying to manifest the same things as each other. Because mm. our energy is just not the same. Definitely. And those things will not be right for us. It will not create the fulfillment we want. So let us all focus on how we feel. That's the outcome we're looking for. Mm -hmm. Yep. Why do we try to manifest 100 millions? Because we want to feel good. We think if we have the money, we're going to feel good. Well, that's not true. It's, it's not, not going true. to solve the scarcity mindset. It's not going to solve the limiting beliefs. It's, it's the other way r around. It's a means uh, to an end, right? Yeah. So what if we just go to the end because it's actually feeling good? Yeah. Yeah. So true. And th there is a lot of shaming as well going on. Like, I guess we all have had those cold DMs from whoever found you scrolling on the, the like they were scrolling on the toilets board and they saw your profile and they're like, oh, I'm just going to drop her or him. Uh, a cold DM and see if they want to buy my stuff. And then they're like, oh, what is your current goal? Like, what are you currently working on regarding your current income? And, you know, back in the days at the beginning, I would answer my goal because I'm someone who wants to, like, I've always been like that. I'd rather make baby steps but build durable foundations than just reach, boom, the, the top of the mountain, but I haven't secured like my own back, so I'm just going to fall down. So I'm all about building up step-by-step -step durability, building myself up as I build my business. And I've been shamed. Like, really? You don't want to make more? I do. Not now. Am I ready for making more? No, it's going to create more stress. And I don't want to be stressed. If I wanted to go, if I wanted to be stressed, I would just go and find a job or do some stressful thing. I don't know. If you're I in the lack it. right now and you were given millions, you would lose it all because you wouldn't know how to uphold that frequency. You wouldn't know how to manage it. Yeah. You want to have a million dollars, you got to learn how to manage one million dollars in advance. Yeah. Because otherwise it's not going to stay. Yep. It's all about the mindset, the emotional intelligence. And when I talk about emotional intelligence is awareness of the emotions, non-judgment of the emotions, just allowing emotions, knowing that they are called emotion and not e-stuck. Like <laughs> you cannot be defined by your emotions. So if one day you feel like shit, my heart goes to you. That's never fun, but it doesn't mean that you are a bad person, that you're a loser, that you're just going to feel like that all your life, you're going to have better days. And there is also a limiting belief that can be created by emotions. Oh, I'm feeling like that today. So I'm just going to feel like that all my life. Oh my God. <clears throat> How about the one that says emotions are too much? No. Don't show that much emotion. Guys, emotion is the fuel for creation. It's, it's the proof you're alive. You're human. Yeah, yeah. But there's so much out there of don't cry when you're at work. Oh, well, I felt because, I mean, I've had moments when I had my former job when stress was too much and tears would flow. And I have learned as well that when you have something like that happen to you, you feel embarrassed, you're so uncomfortable, but it also teaches lessons. 
to yourself and to others that it's okay to have emotions. We all try to shut it down. Mm. Whatever is the limiting belief that was from work, society, our parents, majority of us is getting their or should be basing their decisions on their emotions, on how they feel. And we learn not to do that. We learn to go with our minds, but our minds know nothing. They don't, they don't know the outcome. They don't know what's good. The minds post questions out there <laughs> in your mind's feed and it just gets you stuck. It doesn't give you any clarity. So through one way or another, we have all been told to shut down our hearts. Yeah. And then we do it out of self-preservation too, because living with an open heart can really hurt. But if we're not feeling to the fullest, are we even living? Mm -hmm. um, and our emotions tell us so many things. And for those of you who have been with me and Morgan and, or have come to a reading of mine, you know that when I'm doing readings, I say, I feel all the time. Yep. All the time. It's rare that I hear, that I see, but I feel and I translate the feeling into words. And that's my readings. Because mm. your emotions do not lie to you. Mm. Ever. They're the thing you should lean on. But we've learned to disconnect from them so much and to just run our every day with our minds. And then we get lost and we get confused and we try to learn from others. Mm -hmm. And then we assume their ideas as ours and they become limiting beliefs. And we get trapped in this cycle over and over again that doesn't allow us to stand in who we really are and who we really want to be. Yeah. And by the way, I just want to put something else out there, which is if you guys are stuck, it's because you're internally conflicted about what you think you should do and what is the actual easy, flowy path for you. So if you're feeling stuck and you don't know and you're trying too much and you're still stuck, slow down. Mm -hmm. Check in with how you feel. Look at why are you doing it this way? What made you do it that way? Because mm -hmm. that awareness can take a little while to come along, can take a few minutes, a few hours, a few days to come along. But when it does, it's like, oh, my God, such a relief. I was doing it because I learned in this training or I heard this person say that was a good idea. But when I think about it, my whole body contracts. Mm -hmm. There's stress. That's your emotions telling you that's not the best way for you. So we got to listen to our emotions. We got to listen to our bodies. Mm. And also know the difference between I'm contracting, it doesn't feel good, that wouldn't serve my highest good if I would do that. And the, the slight contraction you might feel that comes with the excitement and yeah. your, your primary feeling was a good feeling and then the contraction came after because there is the famous comfort zone phenomenon so sometimes i mean your nervous system wants to keep you safe right so it's seeing the outside of the comfort zone as the as danger so when you really know yourself you learn to know yourself you will know when something feels quote unquote dangerous for your nervous system but still can benefit you and you can learn the difference between Ooh, that's a little bit risky, but that's exciting. That's meant yeah. for my evolution. And the absolute nope, don't do that. Like if you you can, but that's not going to serve you. And th there is a difference in the intensity of the energy. And we are all energy readers. And Soraya and I are here to to teach how to decipher your own body and your own reactions because that's things that we feel naturally but the mind gets in the way and you're you're like oh no i don't want to do that uh that's that's e no i'm not getting a good feeling but maybe that's what you need to do and it's just yourself trying to protect yourself subconsciously while actually uh it could serve you so there is a very very subtle sometimes subtle not so much after a while or it depends on the circumstances 
Yeah. But that that's yeah, that's why you know sometimes you hear the full body yes. You can, but sometimes it's more subtle than that. Yeah. There there's always a mix of um mm -hmm. stress and then there is either excitement or just pressure and stuckness. Yeah. And that's it's that other part that we need to listen to. Is it just the stress of, oh my God, I don't know how to do it, but this would be so amazing. Mm -hmm. That's really your green light for go. You're just a bit uncomfortable because it's something you haven't done before. It's something out of your comfort zone, but that's where progress happens. Or, oh my God, I don't know this. I can't figure it out. I'm just stressed because I can't figure it out and I don't know what to do. And I'm trying to do it, but it's so exhausting and so draining. Mm -hmm. That's your body saying no. Mm -hmm. And, and that's a subtle difference that we need to play with. Because yeah. if we don't experience it, we will never be able to tell the difference between it. So we got to live life. We got to give ourselves permission to test it out, to experiment with it, to try it out, to feel it within and pay attention to what we were feeling. So give yourselves permission to not get it right the first time or the second time. Because yeah. it takes... There's a learning curve for everything. There's a learning curve for you to decode your what your body is telling you. But if you don't try, you will never get there. Yeah, and detaching from the idea that if I don't get it right, I get it wrong. No. no There's no, no mistake. It's just experience and lesson. And you just need to readjust, uh, reframe, take a step back, change your perspective, and try again. The older I get and the more I look to my past, the more I can see how every little thing was building me up yep. to where I am right now. Mm. Even the things I consider failures, mm. especially the things I consider <laughs> failures, <laughs> they have taught me so much that now I can bring out into the world and help others. And it helped me to help me grow as a human, as a... <sighs> somebody who yeah not not just the soul but like understanding who i want to be and giving myself permission to be that person but if i just had closed myself off and chose to see everything from i'm just bad at this i'm not even gonna try it again because i you know i tried and i thought it was this feeling that was the right feeling and then i failed and i didn't learn anything from it it was just an awful feeling i'm just gonna close my heart and i'm gonna feel again i'm not gonna try again if you want to grow if you want to create progress you gotta be willing to it's not a failure it just doesn't create the exact outcome you were hoping for but it's not a failure right like i, I always take the the analogy of the gps you know you are in a small village and you want to reach the town you can take the highway or you can take the little countryside road. There is no wrong road. There is just a way that requires more time, energy, caution, uh, by the analogy of the example I'm, I'm using. Yeah. And the, the way that is like quicker, faster, like the, the road is very smooth, but you will still get there at the end of the day. I think everybody's going to be a little... Uh maybe triggered by what I'm about to say, but the fastest, oh, sorry, bring way, it. <laughs> the fastest way for you to get to where you want to be is to slow down and do nothing. Check yeah. in with it. Do your That's, inner work. Yeah. The fastest way is the slow way. That's definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Check in with yourself. Let Be willing to let go of all of the things that are holding you back internally. You got to see them first. And then you got to give yourself permission to let them go and ask yourself, how can I do different? Yeah. And then when you have that clarity, do different. Mm -hmm. Do what you're coming up to the conclusion that you want to do. But it's 80% of the work is internal work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not writing affirmations or vision boards. Mm -hmm. It's digging into the things that hold you back because we are naturally abundant and we are naturally happy we are naturally unconditional love we're created out of unconditional love we are unconditional love mm. our only mm. job 
is to dive within and figure out all the stuff that is stopping us from feeling that vibration, from being in that state of being, and clear that out of the way. And that's it. That's the work. We're not here to manifest. We're not here to just create. Sure, we need to have some picture of this is where I want to head to. Mm. This is my destination in my GPS. But let me analyze first the path that I'm going to take. Okay, what's standing in front of me right now that's an obstacle? Why do I think this? Mm. Is this serving me? Is this actually true? Yeah, right. Can I have another belief and another action step that would lead me closer to where I want to be instead of further away? And this, my friends, is the actual hard thing to do because it doesn't feel good inside when you're looking within, when you're bringing out all of these beliefs, there's an actual physical tension that you feel inside of your body Mm. and it's very unpleasant. Yep. But that's where the biggest breakthroughs happen. At least that's my experience. Would you agree? Yes, I definitely agree with that discomfort and this, oh my God, uh, do I really need to do that? It doesn't feel really comfortable, but maybe I could explore that. And even sometimes sitting still in your mind and just observing because you're unsure, you you need that clarity. It's hard and it's uncomfortable because we are taught, once again, we are taught that time is money we need to have instant results we need to have instant proof the instant evidence that i can do this and that works but basically what we are looking for is instant proof that we can trust ourselves but what if we would just decide that we can trust ourselves and that's how you build it up by trusting that you are doing your best Trusting yourself or doing your best. Hmm? Sorry. Sorry, I was interrupting. Um, You actually said something that I want to bring in, a personal experience that happened to me not so long ago. And for those who are not really mindfully present and observing things Mm -hmm. and rather reacting, they wouldn't see that as a measure of their progress. But I just want to give an example. So I've been trying to create some breakthroughs around business. And... I've been seeing old patterns come up and I know it's a tendency that I have to go back into the past and repeat the past. But this time I said, I am not going to do it. I see you, but I'm going to sit with you until I get the breakthrough that allows me to move forward. So every time I see a pattern, I say, I'm not there yet. I'm going to continue searching for it. Mm -hmm. Is this my next idea? Nope. This is still repeating a little bit what I did in the past. This is not the new and improved. So I'm going to continue to think about it and sit with it and and do the inner work, right? And this went on for two to three weeks. And it was intense study and understanding and inner work and all of that. And suddenly there was something that I considered a breakthrough. But if you're not paying attention to your life, you probably wouldn't interpret this as a breakthrough. What changed first, even though I was focusing on business, what changed first was my diet. There was this one day I just couldn't, every food that I tasted, tasted horribly. And the only thing I could eat was salad. Mm -hmm. So all the things that are processed, all the things that I would normally be like craving, Mm -hmm. I put it in my mouth and they're like, This doesn't taste good. This doesn't taste like before. What is happening with me? So the actual breakthrough happened first in my diet. Mm -hmm. My cravings stopped. They're more under control, if we can say that. It's not controlled. I can see them, but I am not controlled by them. Like I see it, but if I don't have that, it's fine as well. I'll feel fine. I'm not going to be feeling desperate like I really want it. Like before... So that shifted and I was just observing, okay, something is happening. Let's keep playing out with it. Let's keep figuring out what's behind the beliefs and all that, that could create the breakthrough that I'm hoping for in business. Mm -hmm. And then a couple of days later it came. So sometimes we're aiming for something specific. And if we don't have that specific within that area, Mm -hmm. we feel it didn't happen straight away. 
And it cannot happen straight away. It took me two to three weeks, more or less, to to get that breakthrough. And it was intense on inner work. Mm -hmm. But those three weeks that you might think, oh, that's just such a long period, such wasted time. I can tell you I've been waiting for this diet breakthrough for like three years <laughs> where I'm not controlled by my cravings and it happened in two weeks. Oh my God, I'll take it. I'll take it. Um, and if you were to just take everybody else's technique and, and apply it even in the business or at work, um, it probably wouldn't get you the results that you wanted after a month because you're just not doing the inner work. That's the actual thing you're here to do, by the way, that our higher power um, is challenging us to do in a way. And you would have wasted not only three weeks, but maybe three months because you just wouldn't be able to get there. Yeah. You see those limiting beliefs, all those unresolved emotion, they're like this veil in front of your eyes that don't let you see the actual thing you're looking for. Right. Our job is to take it out so that we can see it. Yeah. And, you know, you were talking earlier about, you know, your services and bringing, no, not bringing tangible uh, results, like actually not formulating, like in terms of tangible results. Sorry, that's what I meant. The only, quote unquote, tangible result we can provide is the word tool. We can give you the tools, whether they are tangible tools like uh, techniques or intangible tools like ways to use your mind or to shift things. The only thing that we can guarantee 100% as energy workers, energy readers, coaches is to provide you with tools. I think we can also say at the end, you're not going to be the same person. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely not. And uh, so this is very important. And by, yeah, definitely. Because I think a lot of us can struggle with that idea around business. So you need to provide a tangible outcome. Yeah. And I have fallen on that. Oh, me too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I got to figure it out. Like, what's the actual thing I can deliver? What's the actual thing? What's the actual, actual tangible thing? And there's just so many things that come yeah. as as an outcome of working with me. And it's different for everybody. It's and it feels like differently for everyone. Right. Yeah. And I was still stuck on that idea and trying to figure out, okay, but what's the main thing? And like, mm -hmm. I can't figure it out. But overall, I know it's how they feel. Mm. It's how they feel. Mm. And I feel great. And that's the actual thing we need to focus on now moving forward. Yeah, just do your your business, live your life the way you want it. And we all have a different definition of what success is, what prosperity is. To some people, success will be uh, being a housewife or a house dad or house husband. What is the man <laughs> version of housewife? I don't know. Is the word, but you get the idea. And just take care of children. And the, if that makes them happy... That's, That's okay. great. And for someone else, success would be to have three limu and uh, be a CEO of a big international company. And that's also, I mean, both are admirable because they get up each morning with a goal that they want to reach. Yeah, That's why, why I'm all about self-leadership. And you are not defined like a leader is not something outside of yourself. In society, we tend to yes. think leaders are, oh, he is a, a CEO of the big multinational company, or he's the president of such country, he's a leader. No, the leader in you is the, the part of you that tells you to get up every morning and reach for your goals no matter what. Leader is not something that you need to be acknowledged for being from outside. It's your ability of leading yourself, being the leader, the CEO of your life. And, and that's another the, way. That's another way that this new energy is showing up, right? You're saying CEO of the company. It's an actual tangible thing. Mm -hmm. Company. 
a physical office, a team. It's a tangible thing. You're the CEO of a thing. And the new energy in our world says it's not about the thing. It's about what's internal. Mm -hmm. So that's the self-leadership you're talking about, right? It's like you are the person. This is also about taking your power back, right? Yes. Oh, my God. You are the creator of your life. Mm -hmm. Not through the means that we mostly been taught about just affirmations and vision boards and positive thinking Mm -hmm. also, but not only. Um, It's not just about those tools. It's about your inner energy and working with that. It's about knowing that you are the creator, that you hold what it takes to make it happen. Yes, definitely. And I get so incredibly sad every time somebody shows up to me and they ask me, which decision should I make? Mm. It hurts my soul. I never reply to that. I mean, from that perspective, like... Yeah, I always say, I cannot tell you what to do. I can't take your power away like that. You're the creator of your life. And we all need to start realizing that nobody can make choices for us. And if they do, it's because we allow them to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we cannot feel as victims then when the outcome doesn't turn out to be what we wanted because we put somebody else's energy in charge of our lives. Yep. And it's it's about taking responsibility. And uh, I, I believe there are two aspects. The first aspect is not being supported to make your own decisions or not being validated by your parents as a child before you knew better. You know, I'm, I'm really talking about early years of childhood when you need this uh, encouragement, this uh, um, you need to be told that's good. Yes, you, you need to do that. You need to because that's that's a learning process, right? Yeah. So if you are making decisions later as you grow up and you are still building yourself, because like you were saying earlier, Uh, Of course, we know that we are building our ego mind between zero and seven. But what about teenage? When you have the puberty and all these weird things happening in your body, you're still being vulnerable, right? And then you're becoming an adult. So you're like, oh, I wanted to become an adult because then I could be free and I could do this and that and not have my parents' permission or whatever. But what the hell do I do now? Because nobody teaches you any user's guide. And when you make decisions and your folks don't approve of you because they have their own own limiting beliefs and they are seeing uh, your life through the lens of my child is my property, they need to go to university and do these studies or they need to marry this human being instead of that human being they are so supposedly in love with or whatever, uh, then you're, you're not encouraged to make your own decisions. So you don't validate yourself. And then because you you are not taught to validate yourself, the, the second point is um, being like, like having a, a negative self-talk, like ver- being very horrible towards yourself. So not only you don't know what decision to make for your highest good, but you are pressuring yourself to make the right decision because otherwise you're just going to beat yourself up. And you're just going to spiral down and be like, oh, my God, I suck so much at that. And then you're just going to feed and get in the rabbit hole of negative thinking. And that, that sorry, I'm going to swear again, but that shit needs to stop, to stop at some point. You know, we need to deprogram ourselves and just be like, I am making this decision. Is it from a place of fear or is it from a place of self-love? And if you answer this is from a place of fear, you are allowed to make this decision even even if it's from a place of fear. It's okay, but at least you are aware of it. You are not just, like you were saying, like action, reaction. You're like action, pause, response. Yeah. And whatever you choose is fine. I mean, it's your life. You know, like, you know, I was, I was going to refer to Dr. Alban's song, It's My Life in the 90s, because, you know, my life revolves around 90s music, basically. But that's true. It's my life. Take it or leave it. That's the lyric. I think we all need to be taught a lot of things while growing up that we are not. Mm. Um, one of the biggest 
core wounds of humanity lies around victimization. Mm. And victimization is just the state that you are most likely in because you are not taught how to be that creator, how to have that personal power and decision-making power over your life, whether that's from not being encouraged to, not being taught by your parents or your family or not even seeing it around in, in your friendships while you were growing up, wh wherever it came from. Uh, a lot of us still feel that there's a outer authority, an outer power. And sometimes we place that in source, God, universe. Mm -hmm. The universe wants, it wants this to happen. The universe Maybe the universe doesn't want for me what I want for myself. That's a big one. Yeah. What if I make a decision and that's not what God wants for me? Mm. Oh my God, that's such a, a stopper. Yeah. But what if we all start realizing that it's within. Source is within. Mm -hmm. It can never want something different than what you want for yourself. Yeah. It, and so, maybe but because it, it has better in store you know yeah. like it's because you are limiting yourself in that decision or in that goal and uh yeah th this is so so important and everything that you just said only comes down to one thing fear which is the yeah. opposite of love hatred is not the opposite of love hatred yeah. is a byproduct of fear it's either fear or unconditional love. And I'm sorry to say, and I, I don't mean this in a blaming way or in a judgmental way. I'm just speaking truth here. Our parents did their best, but they taught us conditional love. Because if you do this, you're going to make me proud. Or, uh, oh, you're, you're going to be rewarded. But if you do that, I'm going to be very, very pissed off at you. You're going to be a mean little girl or a mean little boy. And mommy's going to be upset or daddy's going to yell at you. And this is not condition. I mean, sorry, this is not unconditional love. This is conditional love. Because as a child, you, are, you have primary needs. Like you need to feel loved. You need to feel safe. Basically, that's uh, and you need food, of course, of course <laughs> yeah. and water. But then, if you feel that your <clears throat> your provider, because you're vulnerable, you're gonna survive on your own when you're a child. If you feel that you are disappointing or making your parents or your caretakers feel bad or shame, then your your source of life of you know like love or like your your primary needs are not going to be met and therefore you're going to be a bad child or whatever you want to call it and that's um that's fucked up i mean that there's, you know, there's another there's another aspect to it which is um that sort of education doesn't leave space for the child to express its uniqueness. Mm. So it leaves children with this idea of it's not safe for me to express yes. my unique gifts. Yeah. Because they're going to piss somebody off. Yep. And it's not safe for me to be happy because when I laugh too loud, I'm told to shut up that I'm too loud because daddy's just come back from work. So I can't be myself. Tired. Right. I can... No. And but that's a major well, thing. I, I like I've worked through that throughout my entire life, but I don't think I have worked as much on that as when I had to or I wanted to start my business. Mm. Oh, that's an accelerated <laughs> it's an accelerated path. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's why so many of us are now starting to be uh business owners. It's because of this. It's not because of the actual Oh, I'm a business owner. I want to have my business or I want to have my freedom is just a consequence creation of as a soul internally, mm -hmm. we want to let go of all the things that don't allow us to be ourselves and to be happy. Mm -hmm.
And so it manifests in the world as a desire to create our own business. But it is the one thing I would suggest everybody to work on. Look at all the things that don't allow you to be you. And these are the things that sometimes you think like, oh, that person's being rude. I didn't like it. But you don't say it because that's not polite. Mm. You don't have to be rude back, but you can say, well, I don't really appreciate the way you said that. And that's okay. You're meeting them with love and compassion, yet stating what you desire and what is healthy for you. Mm. Um, and sometimes we we tend to stop ourselves on allowing our true personality and, and ourselves to to show up and be that way because we are afraid we're bothering because we learned that from our parents, right? But here's your hack. Do it from a place of getting others to understand you and not from a place of judging them. Without pointing fingers, it is yeah. safe. Like, like you are saying, I feel. I feel hurt. What did you mean by that? Can you clarify what you said? Because maybe it's your own perception or your own wound that got hurt. Like you, you're basically about to hurt yourself through somebody else's words where they had no intention to... Uh, and this is also a sneaky one. Like people not having any intention to hurt you and you feel hurt. And that has happened to me. I was in a normal conversation, like just casual conversation. And suddenly the other human I was having this conversation with lost their shit. Like, why are you saying this? What are you implying? Um, uh, nothing. I mean, just like, duh, what, what's going on here? And then you kind of end up on two different uh, <laughs> realities, if I may say so. Like, you're chill. You're just sitting in your bed having a conversation. And the other human being is basically triggered, obviously. And it's just lashing out. But let's just step, take a few steps back and make sure that we understand the other human being um, for what they said right now. And trust ourselves. Also, it comes down to self-trust. Because when someone really wants to imply something and be sneaky and manipulative, usually we feel it. Yeah. So if you're talking to someone and you're not sure, like the conversation is totally cool, peaceful, you know, everything's fine. And suddenly they say something and you're like, ooh, maybe they meant that. Like, tune into your body and the energy. Is it your own wound that you had forgotten about, like subconsciously, that is coming back up, knocking at the door, like, hey, take care of me. Like, you can be free if you heal me, basically. Yeah. Or is it actually the, the human being in question trying to be sneaky? You know the truth. Tune inside instead of pointing finger and throwing a tantrum or i mean it's once again it's fine to express your emotions but instead of being like you are just an asshole you yeah, don't it, react just be like oh I i'm sorry i need to like i feel hurt yeah. i feel vulnerable I, I just need to express these emotions and talk about it exchange yeah you know? uh like it it's okay if you were hurt if you hurt yourself through my words let me know and let's process together. Maybe I can help you. Maybe I can ask you the right questions for you to process. Or maybe I can just hold space and listen. Maybe it's something you need to talk about and you didn't realize that it was weighing on your heart so much. I just talked about this the other day of people who are triggered and they are carrying an emotional wound and then they're triggered they feel the need to defend themselves mm. from that hurt. So they kind of project it outwards towards the other person. Like, how dare you say this? Or what are you implying? And they often expect you to react mm. to what they're saying from the same level. I mean, from an ego hurt, painful point of view. But... And that, that would just like propagate the cycle of judging and pointing and arguing and yeah, and escalating, needing the same energy. Yeah, but those people, when they do that and they trigger you so much, um, what's actually happening is that the person in front of you needs love. 
it leads compassion and understanding. And when you meet them from that space, like you were saying, let's let's work on this together. Show it to me and let's bring it about. Let's see what's going on there. Um, when you make them feel understood and heard, they have no reason to fight and protect themselves mm -hmm. from you. And that creates a massive change in their behavior and in the way they're communicating with you. It's instant. Yeah, it's instant. Yeah. If, and if you guys have not experienced this at home uh, or in your lives, you, you can try this out. Next time somebody starts feeling triggered by something you said or something that happened, meet them with love and compassion and automatically you will feel their energy and then their tone mm -hmm. go yeah. down and smoothening and get centered. It's an incredible experience. It is. But that requires you not to react, but be mindful and observe. Yeah. Read between the lines. This is something we haven't learned. This is something energy healers do a lot. We got to read between the lines. The things that are being said to you are not the actual things that are behind it. Yes. It's not about what you said that made you, made the person say, how dare you? It's an emotional wound behind it. It's a fear behind it. It's a limiting belief behind it. It's not about what's being placed right in front of you. There's something behind it, always. Mm -hmm. And if you're not tuning in to see how that feels, you're not going to be able to hear the dilemma behind it. And that's why it's so important that you don't shut down your emotions. Because yeah. if you shut down your emotions, you're not going to be able to hear anything. You're just going to confront the other person back. That's yeah, where I all the relationship issues um, come from. Yeah. There's this lack of hearing, listening, understanding, being compassionate. Yep. The full presence. And it's uh, it's also about, like you said, defending yourself. Because you, you feel attacked. And if you're not careful, you you are responding to this attack by defending yourself. And then... That's the escalation of uh, like like th this energy that is being fed. And I, I remember I experienced this in 2011 at work. I was physically, almost physically threatened by uh, someone at work. And they want, you, you can feel when someone wants conflict, you know, like they're like, you know, smashing their fist, like let's, let's go there. And something within me, shut down like this feeling and I was like no I'm not gonna go there and I I told this big guy like like twice my weight fair like if I would be behind him he wouldn't see me and I told him go make yourself a cup of coffee and when you come down we can talk and he was not expecting that because he wanted violence he wanted confrontation and actually, he went <laughs> to make himself a <laughs> cup of coffee. And he was much older than me. So it was just like, what the fuck just happened there? Like, I stood up for myself for the first time in my life. And I guarantee you, if you are, um, <laughs> I, I'm going to say this with love just for, for a joke, but like a recovering doormat, like I was, <laughs> uh, like not standing up for myself, because that's something I learned as well when I was bullied at school. And sometimes I would say something to my parents or try to talk about it, like, ah, don't pay attention. They will get tired of it. Ignore. Yeah, right. Doesn't work. No, in <laughs> real life. It, in real it's life, it doesn't work. No, no, no. And uh, so I had made the habit of shutting down and ignoring. But that day, I'm grateful my higher self <laughs> um, took over basically something shifted within me and I just followed my guidance and I didn't like I didn't reply to his energy but I didn't reply to my old self like the the old me would have reacted differently and would have been like oh okay but no at some point you have to break patterns and I promise you when you do that you break patterns and you're you're not going to face that again let me just put something out there because you, you mentioned this and it came to me that there's something people don't really understand. Energy is very general. Mm. 
So, and it's your energy that creates a reality. So when your energy is in conflict, you can think about energy as using keywords, like you would go on Google and search. Okay. So if you are in the energy of conflict, you're going to have conflict at every level because energy is not divided and it's generalized. So if in the dynamics between you and another person that you're talking, this person triggers you, you guys enter into conflict. You're not going to have conflict just in that conversation because the energy you're putting out there for the universe is the energy of conflict. It's saying, I felt it. I wanted it. I took action on it. Check, check, check. The universe says, awesome. Conflict is what you want, is what you're projecting. So I'm going to give you some more of that. (laughs) No, thanks. So you're going to have conflict with your family, with your friends, internal conflict. You're going to have conflict with your clients. You're going to have conflict with everything. Conflict of interest, conflict of emotions, conflict of everything. Mm. This is the main thing people need to understand. You only control yourself and your actions, not even how you feel most of the time. You just got to work through it. (laughs) So be mindful of what you're putting out there because it cannot be divided. If you're constantly putting out there judgment, you're going to get it back. If you're constantly putting out there love, you're going to get it back. But more importantly, this doesn't work just as the bad laws of the energy of karma. This works for everything. Mm -hmm. So consciously put out there genuinely what you want, not faking, because that's not going to (laughs) work. But genuinely (laughs) find ways to tell the universe that's what you want. This is something I work with my clients. Um, For example, you want um, changes in your life. How do you signal that out to the universe? Change is the key word. You change a lot of things that are within your control. Mm -hmm. You change the routine, you change the diet, you change the environment, you change the clothes, you change the areas, you change the places that you go to. And your thoughts. You change all of it. The Mm -hmm. things that are in control that you feel are more tangible to you. You apply it there. And then you're massively signaling out to the universe, hey, I want change. I took action. I did all this bunch of different stuff. So what's the universe going to bring to you? Different. Because you're doing it all different. Mm -hmm. So use this for everything in your life. Everything you're trying to attract. Mm -hmm. Look at the keyword behind it and, and play with it a little comes back to creating the change within yeah to see it outside it's like uh, sometimes it's it's easier than that sometimes it's it's literal little steps baby steps like you were saying yeah right if you want to let's just take this this is a very simple and used example right if you want to get fit you got to work on your diet on your routines on your sleep routines on your workout routines um, you create a plan. So you create a bunch of conditions that will allow you to direct you closer to where you want to be. Mm-hmm. And then what you do, you take action by signaling it out. Right? You take all these action steps that tell the universe, this is the energy I want in my life. This is the energy I want in my life repeatedly. And so it happens. Mm-hmm. So look at the things, look at the coordinates that you're inputting on the GPS of where you want to go to. Right. <laughs> really look at them. We're getting and back to the GPS. see if that is what you're projecting. Mm. See that alignment. Because if you want to have that, I don't know, give me an example. I'm good with example. <laughs> um, let's, we're, we're doing this for, for business. So let's um, let's take a business example. Yeah, business example. Um, you want you want to have lots of different ideas on content, for example. What's the keyword? Lots of different ideas. Maybe it's hard for you to get lots of different ideas for content, but maybe it's easy for you to get lots of different ideas on book titles. Just the, just the title. 
-hmm. Or maybe it's easy for you to get lots of different ideas of how to put outfits together. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's easy to get a lot of different ideas of different experiences that you could do throughout your life. So you work on those ones. They're easier. They come more naturally to you. You do that for a while. And then energy cannot separate itself. It won't know what you mean, that that's just just the one area. And then suddenly you're going to start getting a lot more ideas for your content too. You get this creative juice flowing. And once it flows, it's unlimited. But you make it flow in the direction that you want consciously. Because we're no longer a victim of our energy and of our reality, but rather we we have to take back that self-leadership control over the energy we're projecting. And that happens everywhere with everything because we are complex, multidimensional beings. Right. And that's why anyone who tells you to do things one way, it cannot work because we are multidimensional beings, like you said. So why would you limit yourself into one activity or into one service or whatever? If you are multi-passionate, just do whatever you want. It will work. It's really tough for multi-passionate beings to choose one thing and go with it. Yeah. They need to have a freedom to go with all of it. Just give yourself permission. Do it. And it's not from a place of scarcity because this is also something people like to point finger at. Oh, you you want to do several things because you don't trust yourself and you're from a place of scarcity mindset. No. It can be, but not necessarily. It can't exactly. No, it's just because that's who I am. I cannot just trap myself in one box. I just want to do several things because I don't want to get bored. I want diversity. I want to work with different types of people doing different types of services because that's fun. That's my passion. Why should I limit myself? Yes, limitless. Limitless is the word we're looking for. Yes, limitless. Yeah, so that was a lovely, lovely conversation. I really enjoyed it. Uh, Would you like to share where people can find you well i will put everything in the description box as usual but talk about yourself and uh... well you guys can find me on social media on instagram under soraya rosa underscore or soraya rosa on facebook um i have been slacking a little on those newsletters (laughs) but they're they're available to um and you can find me at sarayarosa.com um, mainly. So here's the thing. And, and since we're talking about this diversity and, and uh, multi-passionate beings, um, you will very unlikely see me repeating the same thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the only thing I have ever stuck to is the oral readings through and through, but all the rest is diverse and doesn't really happen more than once it's something i just do and i move through and bring about something new again and again because i do believe growth comes from being able to move through the energy and continuously reach a different aspect of creativity level whatever that is so i keep moving through different things so you will find me putting out there lots of different topics um trainings classes workshops all the different stuff, but it's always around embodying the real you. And it's always around figuring out how to feel that amazingness within so that you feel more motivated to chase your dreams and build that dream reality we all carry within ourselves. Um, So you can find me always as an oral reader, but also as a bunch of different things because... Let's drop the labels. And you are unlimited. <laughs> yeah, we're unlimited. Let's drop the labels and just um, run with our creative juices. Right. That's uh, that's a great way to put it. So we'll put your your links. So, yeah. And if you haven't experienced a Nora reading yet or working with Soraya, I can only recommend it because that's magic. <laughs> <laughs> It's different. 
<laughs> so yeah thank you very much everybody for listening thank you so much for having been my guest Soraya that was a pleasure and I'm very grateful for each and every one of you listening I'm sending you tons of love and if you resonate with what Soraya said or with what I said just message us get in touch let's chat and if you're serious about embodying self-leadership we are your girls so feel free to contact us and until next time i wish you all the best and see you soon bye bye thank Thanks you bye, -bye. bye.